What is up YouTube? Matt with Chrome Donkey here for another Mod Day Saturday. So what are we doing today? Something I have been waiting on for four plus months. We are finally going to install the DV8 off-road front inner fender liners and a couple other small things. So first and foremost, finally got these in. Uh, it was a long, long time coming. They sent me the wrong part. I had to get the, uh, the correct part sent back and also had to wait on powder coating because these are gonna look really nice on the inside. So these have been actually powder coated, not just spray painted, so they should hold up pretty good. So there's the front inner fender liner. Still gotta put all those together, put the screens back on. And then we walk out here. After I get the fenders off, I'm finally gonna be able to install these high line brackets and something I've literally had in the garage for probably three plus months, but there's been no point of putting them on until I get those inner fender liners because everything's got to go. So these should look really nice. And this is from American Adventure Labs. I believe it is really, really nice instructions. So check this out. Yeah, so American Adventure Lab, singular. So really cool instructions. You got a video online that actually walks you through how to do it. it looks like they've made a um, enhancement to them where you can actually bolt the flare to the bracket to keep it from maybe buffeting in the wind. And these look like they're really, really good construction. And they've got the, uh, the DRLs and the sequential turn signals built in. So that should look really nice. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is extend my axle breather line so while i've got the front inner fender liners completely out it gives you a little bit better access to the front breather and the back breather is super easy it's super wide open so i'm going to take some of this braided line and with some clamps actually remove the oem line and extend this up a little higher just in case and we're going to get started Okay guys, just wanted to check in with you after removing the front fender flares. As you can see, I've got them down here. A couple things I wanted to give you guys a tip on before you go yanking these things off. First and foremost, if you do plan on reusing the plastic clips, as many of other people said, they're really delicate. So for me, I don't really care because I've got some uh, different clips that I'm gonna re-secure these with but you notice all mine actually did come off okay i didn't break anything but there's been other reports that when you go to yank these off sometimes you'll break them so if you do plan on reusing them be really careful so now that we've got full access to the side of the the fender one of the things that i wanted to point out is these two bolts right here uh, don't forget to take these out. These are 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts and they're bolts, not the push pins. So one of these you can access through a hole in the actual inner fender liner. And this one is actually visible from the front of the Jeep without worrying about the fender liner. So make sure you remove those first before you go yanking on anything and everything else just pulls right off. So I'm going to clean all this up just a little bit. <clears throat> and then probably before we worry about putting the inner fender liners back on, I'm gonna pivot and actually do the axle breather, which you can see right here. So this is the top, and this isn't bad. I mean, this is essentially, I mean, let's hope you wouldn't have the Jeep submerged any further than that, but you know, it, it has been known to happen, right? So this is essentially right below the fender flare. And in my case, you know, I've got four and a half inches of lift on 39s. So it's, you know, already quite high but uh in any event i'm gonna probably extend those with some of that stainless braided line that i've got with some nice clamps and probably route it a little bit further into the engine bay a little bit higher and the rear as well the rear is actually not that high so i'm gonna go ahead and knock those out now okay guys wanted to do another quick check-in and show you exactly what i did with the front axle breather tube so we get in here you can see it's nice and dirty been off-roaded like it's supposed to so if I get the camera up there you can see I've got a nice clamp on the front if the focus will cooperate not much I can do about it 
but anyhow so you got the clamp up front that hopefully you can see right through the shock and the spring and you'll notice that it is at a slight uh, angle down if you can tell ever so slightly with the basically the orientation of the vehicle to the ground it is a slight slope so any fluid could drain back in got it zip tied to the bottom of the brake line bracket it's following the exact same path as the OEM again I have it zip tied right here at the top of the, the shock mount tower and then on the inner side you can see that I've got it run right up here and double zip tied right to this bracket and notice that it the little uh, breather cap is right below this reservoir so when the hood closes you won't have any issues with clearance uh, and that I mean honestly if my engine is completely submerged I have much bigger problems so I'm much more comfortable with this uh, it's much higher and one of the things that I was debating you know I didn't do a lot of uh, research ahead of time online admittedly uh, but I was curious about the amount of flex that was needed in this line because obviously with the live axle up front sway bar disconnected clearly the axle is going to pivot up and down so what I did is if I can try to do this with one hand this was the OEM you know axle breather and if you kind of put it in position again apologies about the camera but you see up there it's basically in position and then if you follow it let me swap hands if you put it in its OEM position is basically my point I tried to match the line exactly the way it was so it was basically popping out right there as you guys remember on the other side of that tower coming all the way down and basically being right alongside where it is now notice I mean it's basically the exact same shape the exact same amount of tubing that I cut with the braided and I've already been off-road in this thing you know I would say quite extensively I you know we flexed it out all the way to the point where you know the fender was rubbing and I didn't have any issue with that breather line popping off so I'm hoping this will be adequate uh, there's clearly a little bit extra in the engine bay if I had to cut those zip ties and you know let it flex out a little bit more and re-secure it in the engine bay I left certainly a little excess but this is the way I did it this is also the way I'm gonna do it on the rear is basically try to match it up to what OEM was with regards to you know the angle the curves the amount of play because if you put too much play in it it's gonna sag like this and what will happen is when that fluid you know if the axle gets hot and that fluid comes out in the breather line it's gonna pool at the bottom of this hose and never be able to run back out and that's gonna block air so you want to always have it at a slope so any fluid that were to get in there will drain back so I couldn't leave too much excess down here by the axle or else it would create a droop so that's what I wanted to avoid and you know that's why if you can tell it's at a little bit of a slant going down so you know just based on gravity that should keep everything nice and in check where it needs to be so yeah so now that that's done let's move on to the inner fender liners and get all that knocked out okay guys another check-in on the fender trim removal so this one is all done I'm about to set it aside until we get completely ready for it but I wanted to give you guys a couple tips on the one that I haven't done yet I haven't touched this one yet this is fresh off the vehicle and you know this one is done I already trimmed the tabs off so basically you've got to remove this tiny little Phillips head holder this is super flimsy so if you strip it out no worries it'll just pop out uh, strip the first one out because these are super cheap so you can get that out easy uh, once you get out, that out there's several of these I'll give you the spec it's a t30 there's several t30s so you've got one here you can see one there there's one down there there's one in this corner there's also one back behind this trim piece so before you go yanking on anything just make sure you get all those t30s out and then this bracket will come completely off however you see that little see how flimsy that thing is I literally just pop this up so there's two right there as well at the top now the one thing I wanted to show you though is this bracket on this side over here this is the edge right towards the outer side of the vehicle 
this little guy is holding in this side of the bracket so you may have to get a trim removal tool and get in there and, and clamp this and pull it out because this was the only thing holding the bracket in once all the bolts are removed the other thing at the very rear you got this support structure same thing this little guy right here has got to be removed so you can pull this inner trim away from the fender flare the actual painted piece and then the rest of this is easy it just pulls out um, you know these indentions are basically what's known as plastic welds as far as I can gather and these are just adhering this inner trim to the actual painted plastic but they pop off super easy just be real careful removing this little guy and this little guy because sometimes that can give you a little bit of trouble one other small piece I wanted to show you see this little guy right here so this is after you've got this separated the last thing that's going to be holding it on is this little guy right here and it's literally just a tab that you can press down you see all that lovely mud from when we've been off-roading probably from Iron Mountain or Little River Canyon one of those two places there we go so once you pop that little guy out then the whole thing comes off just like that you can see where those plastic welds were and there you go all this stuff will be tossed in the trash okay guys something else I want to show you is you need to remove these tabs so this can be a little bit of a tedious job but as long as you've got a nice sharp blade literally you just go at a little bit of an angle of course there we go a little bit of an angle and just cut it right on the inside and I'm gonna see I don't want to jack up my my flare doing this with one hand just to show you guys As a matter of fact I'm not gonna do that I'm risking coming out here cutting some of the paint so there I put down the video real quick just to show you and and did just one but you can see like right there is where it was so it's trimmed nice and flush and just like I did on the rears I'm gonna do some of that door trim on this outer edge just to seal up any imperfections and also just give it a nice little finished look a little black lip so any of these imperfections that you know you might feel a little protrusion or something when you run your finger over this I wouldn't worry about it if you do what I'm gonna do which is put those fender trim you know little black uh, protectors on here so just be real careful and go with this slow that way you don't cut into the actual plastic out here where you can see it okay guys installation is complete I'm about to clean up obviously you can still see I've got all the the remnants and after effects of doing this installation <clears throat> but there's a couple things I want to show you guys before I clean up and put everything back together and then I'll probably do a final walk around once I have a chance to clean things up like the fenders and, and whatnot but a couple things I wanted to point out having done this um, number one uh, American Adventure Labs does send this extra screw right here it's actually a bolt with a lock nut on the underside it's an optional thing uh, I chose to install it after seeing what a lot of the other people had complained about <clears throat> because what happens is when you have this bracket the bracket is super secure to the actual Jeep and it comes out with this super nice LED but the problem is there's not really anything to secure this outer edge of the fender to the rigid structure which is the bracket so what can happen is even though the fender uh, because I use their nut cert kit which even adds extra reinforcement so the fender itself is super secure right now however with just the nut certs this outer edge could still come up and down and especially going down the highway at speed you know wind catching right in here would actually create a little bit of separation so that's why they they have this extra this extra bolt right there so I chose to install it completely agree uh, American Adventure Lab their products are top-notch um, the nut cert kits as you can see and I've, I've or, already done another review on the rear inner fender liners but you can see they actually have a 3d printed uh, washer essentially that goes in the notches and you'll notice on the front and it even says this in the instructions you're not supposed to do nut certs here and here or there so there's three spaces actually four spaces where you do not do nut certs in the front so essentially you have one that's hidden back behind the fender this bracket so you leave the bracket off do the front one get it super secure then install the bracket 
you have the first one here, so the first two, then you skip two, then you do the top one, and there's another important thing on this one on the front, uh, this one actually has a silver mark on it because there's a certain washer that is designed to go right here. It's a little bit different shape. Then you skip two, and then you have three going down. Okay, so like I said, I still gotta clean all this, but three going down. Super secure. I mean, the thing is not going anywhere. It's super rigid. Now, another thing in the instructions say that you can technically remove these brackets. I mean, I could have cut them right here and got them completely off. But what I found is they're really not all that rigid. So I literally just took the palm of my hand and bent them straight up as far as they would go to get them completely out of the way. So I really don't think that's gonna be a clearance issue hitting those little brackets. Uh, if I ever find that it is on the trail, I mean, it'll take just a few minutes with a, a cutting blade and those things will be gone. But I just don't think it's necessary right now. You can't really see them anyway. Um, you know, if you're looking at the Jeep from the side, you might just get a tiny little glimpse of it, but not something I'm mess, messing with right now. May change my mind later, we'll see. Now, I will be honest, um, although I like the look of the DV8 inner fender liners, this is just my opinion. After waiting on these for so long, I'm really let down with the build quality. And I'm just being honest. This is an honest review. Um, not that the metals aren't good. I mean, the metal is fine. You know, these nice little, little bolts are fine. The screens are fine. I even had them powder coated, as you can tell. But the front doesn't really do a good job of lining up. Now, granted, I do have this sector shaft, you know, brace that's aftermarket. It's a track bar and sector shaft brace. You can see that that technically interferes with one of the holes that's supposed to go into the frame. And there were no instructions that I could find in my box other than just a, a package of bolts and the inner fender liner. So, you know, and again, maybe I got the box that didn't have any instructions. Maybe they, they typically send instructions with the rest of their kits. Maybe I was the lucky one that didn't get instructions. But again, I don't know what is supposed to go right here because that's the frame rail, right? There's no way to get back up inside that to do any type of nut. There's no type of uh, self-tapping screw that was sent. So the best I can figure, and again, maybe I'll find out later and change this, this review after I watch the instructions online, but you're supposed to use these little Christmas tree things just to kind of secure it to the frame rail. I mean, that's a terrible design to me. I mean, this needs to be semi-secure. And granted, right here is super secure. It bolts to this. Um, but again, that could have been way better. You know, at the back, this is fairly self-explanatory. You can get your hand behind there. And those are two bolts to keep it nice and secure at the rear. So the thing isn't going anywhere. I mean, it's super secure. I'm just a little let down with the build quality. You know, again, being honest. I do love the look, don't get me wrong, so I'm not trying to, you know, throw too much shade on them. I'm just uh, really not impressed. And matter of fact, on this side, this was so off, I couldn't get it lined up to save my life. I mean, I left this completely loose. I left these completely out and was trying to shimmy this back and forth. And no matter what I did, I could not get these front two holes to line up. Now, there is a existing this little guy right here see this hole there was a little wire that you actually you know it's just one of those little Christmas tree holders you have to pop out to get that to go flush but again no matter what I did those holes would not line up and even if they did something as simple as a um, Christmas tree plug is not gonna keep that from popping out so again either I'm missing some huge obvious step or, of the instructions perhaps got an off pair of these or again I'm just not impressed with the uh, the installation guys I mean you've got this guy holding it nice and secure on this post you have these two that are holding it nice and secure to the actual frame you know it connects here in the middle but up front I mean you see what I had to do I had to basically rig up a zip tie through the frame rail to actually keep this secure to the frame and then of course up front I mean you see what I'm talking about? There's there's no alignment there at all. It couldn't come down because if it came down, the rest of it's out of alignment. So it's, uh, again, disappointing. Now, 
Let's go back to the other mod that I did today, which were the axle breathers. Really impressed with the final product of that, if I do say so myself. <clears throat> so down there, you can see the line coming out. It's, um, it's clamped and it's tied. It's following the exact same path as the original breather. And when you come up in the engine bay, if you can see, it kind of comes up and slopes up and it kind of does an S pattern and then I've got it zip tied right there with the actual uh, OEM you know, breather so water can't just run in there but it can uh, let, let hot air out. So that's where that wound up. Now the rear, this is why I wanted to show you this where I put everything back together. Like a few other people online, I've actually run it into the very tip top of my rear tail light. So you can see that's the OEM breather that came on it. You can see it's zip tied nice and secure. It's going down. Now let me show you guys this because for you Gladiator owners, you might want to know this. So <clears throat> bear with me while I scoop my <clears throat> body under the rear of this. Okay, so that's coming in from the tail light. So you can see that I've got it secured and then I cross over the frame rail. Forgive me for giving you guys vertigo. <laughs> But once you come over the frame rail, I've got it secured, plenty of excess, but notice it's always at a slope going down, and then it comes all the way down to the axle. Now, what I wanted to show you guys, to me, I'm not really impressed where Jeep decided to put this, because to be quite honest, OEM comes up from here, and it secures right here. This is not high to me. I mean, granted, I guess you could argue that, you know, maybe that's the top of your tire. However, that's, I mean, maybe a little bit taller than your door, I suppose. So maybe it's okay. But I mean, God forbid you ever get in a hole and, you know, the bed of the, the truck is touching water. It's just going to suck in. So literally, this is as high as it would go. And I mean, maybe that's okay. You know, I'm lifted high enough, I would hope that that never goes underwater because look at all the other stuff that would then be underwater so maybe it's all right but for me i just i wasn't satisfied with it so that's what i did chose this stainless you know braided line so it's not going anywhere got it nice and clamped down so it won't pull off and again plenty of excess so that when you're flexing out on the trail you're not going to yank it out and basically what i was looking at is the amount of play in this guy you can see that's already probably broken loose on the trail this little clip because there wasn't enough play you can see how that snapped off so basically what I did was okay well if that's not enough let's pull it all the way down and you know there's plenty of looping and excess there and of course this thing can slide so that's what I tried to mimic here there's a ton of room here in this uh, the zip tie here is not super tight that way if it had to flex it could but uh, again, always keeping it at an angle going downward so you're not gonna get fluid pooling in the line. So guys, you know, this has been a, a fun but exhausting project. It's been all morning, but I'm pretty much done. Now it's time to go clean up. So basically we did the DV8 front inner fender liners. We did the American Adventure Lab Highline uh, brackets, and I'll do a review on those once I clean up and show you guys exactly what they look like running. And then I extended my axle breathers with this nice stainless steel tubing and clamp. So I'm gonna leave links in the description to all the products that I used. Um, definitely recommended. You know, there's not anything that I would recommend against doing. Like I said, I just wasn't quite impressed with the DV8 build quality. I just feel like, you know, it could be one of these things where they're built in China and the, uh, the line, the holes don't line up quite right with the frame rail the way they're supposed to and honestly i've had that happen before with another vendor who will remain nameless so I, that's my suspicion uh, but all in all all things considered i do really like the front and the rear uh, i am going to add this stripping this weather stripping or a door seal protection i'm going to add that up here to match the rear I do love the look. I do love the fact that they're painted to match and they will work. So I'm going to leave them. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel. Uh, before we end this video, like I said, I'm going to do one final clip that I'm going to put in here once everything is clean up to show you guys everything running, show you the sequential lights that American Adventure Lab uh, couples with their brackets. Stay tuned for more.
All right, guys, just a final clip. I wanted to show you guys these lights actually working. Uh, this is the next day in this video, so I wanted to come out here. I was going to do it last night, but time got away from me. So essentially, when you unlock the door, you know, you get the, the sequential motion. Same thing when you lock it. It's super fast. Now, I will say that unless you buy their, um, their connector that will eliminate the turn signal out warning on the dash you need to make sure that you have the taser and in my case i've got the taser mini and there's actually instructions that they posted on their instagram page on how to clear the turn signal out warning and it's actually really straightforward you just go in the taser menus under turn led and you turn it off save it you turn it back on save it and then you tell the taser to do a full reboot. And after the reboot comes on, you simply start the Jeep up, let it run for a minute and do your turn signals. And when you first start your turn signal, you'll get the hyper flash where it flashes really, really quick. But then mine took about five to seven seconds. And once that time period had lapsed, it's like the taser learned and it slowed the blinker down and now it's working normal, just like it did OEM same thing with the other turn signal so you have to do it on both turn signals and then that warning light will disappear and it'll operate just fine so yeah so that's what it looks like really impressed now granted i did not opt for the rgb version there is a little bit more expensive version where you can change the colors of these and you know you can do some really cool stuff with different color leds i just really don't care about that i just wanted the daytime running lamps and the sequential turn so okay if we turn on the lights this is what the led runtime light looks like during the daytime so i just turn the lights on on purpose to simulate this but this is what you get during the daytime with your headlights off as long as you have your drls turned on so Anyway, that's a wrap, guys. I'm really impressed with the way this project came out. I really do think that I like the look. It gives me a lot more clearance, as you can tell, because the inner fender liner is completely gone as far as that plastic. And, uh, and yeah, so hopefully it won't have any clearance when these 39s flex out on the trail. If you haven't already, make sure to like the video if you found it informative and useful. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you'll get notified when we push out more of these videos. And stay tuned for more. Stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next one.